Hello and welcome to our reflection for Monday the 4th of May. On Friday evening, Tim spoke about the Derbyshire village of Iam, where people made the great sacrifice of closing off their community in order to prevent the spread of the plague. And it sparked a thought in my mind about another community that made a heroic response to the plague or Black Death. It's rather further away from home, but some of you may have visited it at some time, for it is Oberammergau, the home of the Passion Play, that is performed every ten years at the start of each new decade. And that's been going on since the very first performance in 1634. But I wonder if you know much about the history of the play. The town of Oberammergau lies in Bavaria's largest nature preserve, the Ammergau Alps. Today it has about 5,300 inhabitants. Back in 1633, the plague arrived at Oberammergau when bands of Swedish soldiers came plundering and murdering in the region. Plague fires, visible from afar, burned as a sign that towns had been struck by the plague. But thanks to having strict watches posted at the edge of the town, Oberammergau was largely spared. Until, that is, one day a labourer named Kaspar Schisler, who had been working elsewhere, slipped past the plague watch to celebrate the fair in Oberammergau with his wife and children and he brought the plague into the village. Within a year, 84 adults and many children of, of the estimated 800 population had died. That same year, 1633, in the cemetery of the parish church of St Peter's and Paul, village representatives vowed to perform a passion play every 10 years in hopes that the town would be freed from the plague. And it's said that from that moment onwards, there were no more deaths from plague in Oberammergau, even though the disease continued to wreak havoc in the rest of Bavaria. The following year, the people of the village constructed a stage in the cemetery, upon which the play of the Passion, Death and Resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ was performed for the very first time at Pentecost. Productions were to continue every 10 years until some 200 years later a new stage was erected on the northwest edge of the town where the Passion Theatre still stands today. The history of the Passion Play is marked by the great community spirit and absolute determination of the people of Oberammergau to keep their vow, despite all the adversities that have threatened the performances again and again over the centuries. Today, the Passion is seen by about half a million visitors, over a hundred performances, each one lasting six hours, staged between May and October. Half of the town's inhabitants collaborate in the production, and to do so, they have to have been born in Oberammergau or to have lived there for at least 20 years. There have been remarkably few occasions when the play has not been performed as scheduled. It was delayed for two years in 1920 and cancelled in 1940 because of the two world wars. But sadly, coronavirus has meant that this year's performances, due to begin in just two weeks' time, have had to be postponed until 2022. The faithfulness of the people of Oberammergau is awesome. They really live out their faith as their entire lives revolve around the telling of the passion of Jesus. As soon as one production ends, planning begins for the next one. 
musical and acting talent have been intensively fostered in the town since the 19th century. Whole families participate in the production, including their animals. In the performance I saw in 2010, there were horses, donkeys, chickens, sheep, goats, and even a camel on stage. About a year before The Passion begins, a notice is hung at the Passion Theatre, displaying the so-called hair and beard decree. From now on, all participants must let their hair and beards grow until the end of the plays, with the exception of those playing Roman soldiers. So if you're worried that you haven't been able to have a haircut for the past six weeks, just think of the people of Oberammergau. And what does all this have to tell us? Well, two things. First is the call to remain faithful and put our trust in God to bring us through the most challenging of times. And the second is the call to tell our story and pass on the good news to all those we are able to share our faith with. Perhaps when we are allowed to come together again, we might think of mounting a production of some sort that tells the story of our faith. And I'd like to read to you a passage from the Book of Acts. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version and I'm picking the story up at the end of Peter's long spe speech on the day of Pentecost. It's Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. Those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Amen. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. By the gift of the Spirit, these very ordinary, largely uneducated men had been given the power to speak with authority and win disciples for Christ. Without their faithfulness and willingness to tell the story of Jesus, the church would never have got off the ground. And without the people of Oberammergau and their faithful retelling of the story of Christ's passion, many fewer people might have been brought to faith. How may we find ways of faithfully telling the story of the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ to those who have not heard it. Perhaps that's something that we can think about in the coming days. Let us pray. It's a prayer taken from the Roots Resources. Lord grant us the urgency of the early church in our preaching the faithfulness of the early church in our worship, the expectation of the early church in our ministry, the generosity of the early church in our homes, and the joy of our Lord Jesus Christ, risen, ascended, glorified, as we live as your people today. Amen. May God's blessing be with us as we go, 
a blessing from the one who calls us together, a blessing from the one who never deserts us, a blessing for life in all times and in all places, a blessing from our gracious God. Amen. Thank you for listening. Good night.